Hello, hunters, and welcome back to another episode of Bloodborne. I'm your host, Darkside, and today we're going to go finish up a few things. Um, first thing I want to go do is pretty much travel back to Central Yarnum. And we're going to see what's going on over here with a couple of storylines. Um, yeah, I believe the storyline should be just about wrapping up over here. But I want to show you some stuff so that way you guys kind of know what we're going to get into here. Uh, so, so far, and we'll, we'll finish it off with going to meet Jura, I believe. I, I think I can kill him right now. So, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, first things first. Have I heard of Bergenworth? Our man Gilbert's still over here. The locals aren't happy. Okay, so he's still good right now. That's good. Alright, so he's still good. So the next thing we want to do is... Hmm... Next thing we kind of want to do is instead of going over here, we uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm maybe I'm off with the timing. I might be off with the timing. Hey, I don't care about you, dude. That's buck ass, son. You missed me. You missed me. So what I wanted to do was come over here and meet up with the resident gas queens. All right, so it still hasn't happened yet. Okay, still hasn't happened. God damn it! Damn, getting fucked up. I'm on the run. I see this shit. These motherfuckers got me on the run. They got me on the run. They got me on a run, shit. <laughs> I'm a flipping motherfucker, I am. Alright, so... We don't have to worry about those stories just yet. It's gonna get there. But you wanna make sure you check those stories, though. And I'm going to show you something. I'm not sure if this clinic is going to be open from the front, but we'll find out right now. Is her door open? Oh, hello. You're alive. So remember, I went in here. I've received another patient. This, I've achieved much, and I owe it all to you. Take this as thanks. Yeah. Custom, doesn't it make you feel warm inside? So, <laughs> you remember <laughs> this bitch. He's supposed to be dead. If you find any, I'm depending on you, brain. 
And we went up there and we saw this other lady. She was telling us, hey, don't get the fuck up these stairs, man. If you come up these stairs, I'm going to whip your ass. But for some reason or another, here she is. Still chilling. You know, trying to fuck around. Talking about, thank you for bringing me another patient. If you guys remember, there was the old beggar that was inside the uh, Forbidden Woods. And I sent his ass over there to her. And I told you not to send him anywhere else. Because if you sent him to Odin Chapel... Um, and Cathedral Ward, then you're going to have a big problem on your hands, right? So, I hope you didn't send him over there, because otherwise, when you make this trip, your ass going to be in for a rude awakening. Yeah, a lot of people going to be dead. You send him over there to her, and we're going to see what becomes of him a little later. <clears throat> Our Cephas Clinic ain't what it seems. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Better be careful. Better be careful. There's a lot of things in the game. While the game, to me, honestly, compared to like Dark Souls and Demon Souls, is pretty short. Um, but there's a lot of little things in here, especially with all the shortcuts and things like that that you can use to get around and back to areas that kind of make the game uh, seem really short. So, oh, the hunter! Another one you sent made it here safe and sound. Pity that. This place is a haven now for so many. Thanks to you. You're welcome. I'm overjoyed, really. I don't suppose there's anybody out there worth saving anymore. But you did all you could. And so many owe oh, you amazing, really. Not because you're a hunter, but... <laughs> oh, makes me think. Once dawn breaks, maybe I can just... Makes it easier to bear all of this, you see. You've made life easier. Thank you. You're welcome, son. So literally everybody's here now. And we've got... He just told you everybody that was going to make it here is there. If they're not there now, guess what? They're not going to make it there. Um, Let's run up here real quick. Do these reward. And I'm... Kind of showing you if you look at his lamppost, you notice some shit. Oh, damn it. Some shit has changed. His lamp was a little different that time, and now he can summon spells. I've got 16 eyes, um, 16 insight called eyes. And <clears throat> the more and more insight you get, which is generally depicted by the game and the areas that you have visited and the number of bosses you have killed um the different the game begins to look and what i mean by that is things start to change ever so subtly it's not major changes where you're like oh you know like things change put it that way they change and they don't change necessarily for the Oh shit. Damn, got lucky on that one. I'm willing to admit that I got lucky on that one. Okay. Why is that dude still sleeping? Alright. I guess I fucked up here when I decided that I wasn't gonna... Certain things I wasn't gonna change. Let's find out just to make sure. Meh. Okay. Yeah, I kinda messed up. Don't worry. We're gonna come back here later on in the evening. And we'll change some shit up. The next place that you meet Eileen is literally there, so... <clears throat> have at that. What we want to go do now is we're going to go meet... Jura. Jura is the... What is he? He's the uh, hunter that overlooks the... Um, graveyard of Dark Beast. No, that's not where I want to be. 
it's not the forbidden grave either. Oh fuck, which one is it? Which one of these headstones has it? It should be the Hypogene Gale one. I did light. Mm. That's some bull. And what? Forbidden Woods. No. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot which one it was. Ah, oh, fuck it. I forgot which one it was that leads me back to the Dark Beast, to the Dark Beast Pearls um, graveyard. It could have been the one over there, Dark Beast Gate, but I kind of forgot. So I'm just going to have to run my happy ass over there. Shouldn't take but a second. I'm not going to kill anything. So mm. we want to go meet Jur, and we're going to take the back path in order to get to him. And the reason why we want to do that is because we don't want him to see us actually kill anything. <laughs> Otherwise, he's not going to be so friendly. <laughs> Let's get our happy asses over to him. See what we can make happen. Alright. Look at me. Ghost on these mother suckers. Like, oh, where y'all at? Yeah, I did light it, so. Hmm. Alright, I guess I'll have to figure out which one that is, because I'm not sure, to be honest with you. So, <clears throat> now we're inside Old Yarnum, and we can take. The back path. So remember, there was two uh, wolf things over here. So you can kill them if you want to. Nothing stopping you from doing that. They're not incredibly difficult to beat at this point in the game. Especially if you've been leveling up at the pace that I have. You can kind of skip by all of this right here. Because none of that's going to really pose much of a threat to you, to be honest with you. And if you remember, there... <laughs> I don't believe these bastards can climb. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't think they can. So... <clears throat> Here we are. So now we came in the back way. Jura can't see us. His allies chilling over there. And we're just going to go up here and meet him. Now I don't care if I die and he does attack me because I don't have that many uh, echoes, souls is what I'm calling them. But if you remember that was that path that we unlocked when we came over here inside Old Yarnum. All you're going to do now is if you want to come over here and meet him and there's going to be two couple of things you can do. You can talk to him and he's going to give you some stuff and then you can kill him if you want to. It's entirely up to you what you choose to do. He is going to give you the powder cake badge either way. Either way. So see that? There you go. Now we've met Jura. Uh, say something, homie. Well, well. How did you get in here? It's no matter. What brings you to old Yarnum? Uh, I've no interest in matters further up. But you must not disturb this place. The beasts do not venture above and mean no harm to anyone. If you still insist on hunting them, then I will hunt you first. You understand me? <laughs> so... If you say you're going to hunt the beasts of old Yarnum, be prepared for a fight. If you tell them you'll spare them. Yes, very good. I no longer dream, but I was once a hunter too. There's nothing more horrific than a hunt. 
In case you fail to realize, the things you hunt, they're not beasts, they're people. One day you will see. Mmm, it's time you got going. But first, a farewell gift. I have no use for it anyway. So he gives us the powder keg hunter badge, which is great. So at this point now, you can choose to do what you want to do. If you kill him, he will drop the power, the set, which is what he's wearing, um, which isn't a bad armor set. The battle can be a little bit difficult. Uh, because of the fact that it's on this small roof, but it actually also benefits you because if you want to, you can hammer his ass right over the side if you get lucky. Otherwise, choose to do what you want to do. I'm gonna attack this fucker though. Is it the blood, or are you just raving? <laughs> when the fray part, join the fray. Oh shit. Damn! Oh! Oh! No! Ah! Boom. He should die. Yep. There he goes. He's dead. So, <laughs> now, the really difficult part is if you notice here, we can't, I don't think, where he fell, yeah, let's, let, let's check, just, just, just to be safe. Um, where he fell, you won't be able to pick up what it is that he has, but you can leave the area, come back, and... The item should be there, so let's let's find out just to make sure that they drop somewhere um, that we can't get to. So he fell right here over this side, and to be honest with you, that's pretty easy way to beat him is to just push his ass over the side. Uh, but he wasn't that difficult. I can't see where his soul mark is. Be honest with you, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't see it. I don't see his soul mark. So <clears throat> that's fine. I, I just don't see it. But he's dead now, and we can. Where is his soul mark? Sometimes he gets stuck up in the sky right there. But I don't see it. All right. So this is what I'm gonna do. I thought I had a hunter's mark equipped. Don't use it, fucker. What are you doing? All right, so we'll use a hundred mark to go back. And he, once we go back there, his um, his soul should be there for us uh, to partake in, and we'll we'll be able to pick up the ash and um, hunter set that way. Uh, he routine to be honest with you in that battle he routinely drops over the side routinely um oh damn it took me all the way back to yard goal really god damn is that the last time I touched the freaking hunter's dream point well let's hope that he no I don't need to do that let's hope that he's still there then I guess because he will uh yeah I doubt hopefully his soul is still there I'll just say that. Hopefully it's still there. You missed me, whore. I really probably need to get my endurance up. That way I can attack more effectively. Um, the, the highest I've ever really taken my endurance in this game is 25. I think I've taken it to the soft cap. That's it. Like I haven't gone any higher than the soft cap in the game. Probably should though. I should go higher. I, I because I'm not focusing on trying to build a versatile build. I probably will go higher than the soft cap, and I can I can see myself probably doing a so yeah. So the other thing that's interesting about this game is the difference 
and how people approach the soul level, especially with regards to PvP, because you typically in Dark Souls games, you had the PvP statistic where it was that everybody capped out their builds at soul level 20 in order to make the, the game, I guess, more fair to play. In this one, it's kind of debated on where you should end up and where you shouldn't. I'm going to I'm gonna cap my character out at level 120. And since it's going to be a complete uh, strength build, I'm pretty much dashing towards 50 on my... I want a hard cap of 50 on my strength. And I want to boost up the vitality as high as I can get it. Probably, I'll probably take that to... To be honest, I'll probably only take it to 40 um we'll see my for my vitality and then and then whatever remaining points i'll put those in endurance and i'm not going to do anything arcane wise i won't do anything skill wise at all for this build it's going to be completely strength built now if i do decide that i want to do new game plus plus or and so forth like that which i don't know why you wouldn't inside of souls game um damn his souls are usually up here I'm not exactly sure. Is that? Is that it on the floor down there? This is odd. His souls are usually up here. His soul, so that way you can get your item drop. I don't. This is odd. I don't know what the hell happens to his souls, and I apologize about that. But his soul is usually up there, and you can usually get. We got the powder cake set, so that the powder cake bad, so that's the most important thing. Because you will be able to get his ash and set from Nope, his souls did not draw for some reason. I have no clue why why his soul is not there. Whatever. His soul's not there. I can't get to it. One way or another. That sucks. Ball diggles. If I had known that, I'd have been extra careful about making sure that he didn't fall over the side. But let's uh, let's reawaken and make our trip back to the Hunter's Dream before we end this here. The next video that we're probably going to get into uh, since we beat Dark Beast Paul is um, we are going to head over to Bergenworth. And once we are there, we're going to meet up with some pretty interesting, not to mention some new foes um yeah i don't i don't particularly care for the new foes they, they kind of creep me out um and then we're gonna have an interesting battle that's kind of kind of changed the way we see the world so it's really interesting and a uh, really interesting take on that there's also another portion of the game that i would like to visit off the grand cathedral path now that we have the tonsil stone so mm. You can come over to the bath, mes bath messenger, and now you'll notice that you'll be able to purchase other items. The Hunter Chief's emblem is in there in case you don't want to go the way I did for it. Um, <clears throat> but you'll notice there's going to be some items here. The stake driver is there because we got the powder cake badge. That was the weapon that um, that was the weapon that he was using on us. Uh, that Jura, the hunter, was using on us. Uh, it's a trick weapon fashion at the workshop. Heretics, the powder kegs, favored by the retired hunter Jura. The stake driver with its queerly complex design violently drives stick stakes into the flesh of foes. The stake driver allows for high damage critical attacks, but is difficult to use and leaves the wielder wide open. Moose assuredly, it is not a really great weapon to use. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother um, with it. I don't like the move set on it. To be perfectly honest with you, is mostly what it is so i wouldn't use it um no nah, no nah, not gonna use it not gonna use that at all so next what i like you guys to do is pay attention over here you can come up here to the uh pool um i think they're called the messenger pool and you can use insight to buy these items if you want to uh i to be honest with you you're gonna get enough insight that i would suggest that you just use insight to buy some of those items but here we go. The we beat them. So the Ash and Hunter set is right inside here. Ash and Hunter trousers, the Ash and Hunter gauntlets, and so forth. So let's take a look at a piece of this equipment. Attire of the retired Hunter Jura, painted with ash and ceremony to ward off blood. Jura is known through his contact 
with the powder kegs, the heretics of the workshop. He is said to have been both uncommonly kind and dreadfully foolish. Jura felt defeated by the state of old Yarnum and renounced his hunter's vows. So it's kind of interesting that you also have heretics of the Healing Works Church workshop. So not only did everything start in Bergenworth and then everything split with Lawrence and William, and these guys were like, yo, deuces, son, I'm going to start my own piece over here. And they end up over here at the Healing Workshop with Lawrence. But then you also had these whole group that said, you know what? Uh, I don't really want to be part of the Healing Church Workshop anymore because I don't believe in what you're doing. And then they got labeled as heretics. And Jura and his one other hunter ally went over there to Old Yarnum and started defending the Blood Star Beast. Well, you know, the beasts inside there because they start realizing, you know what? These beasts are actually people. And we're living in a dream. And I don't really want to participate in this hunt anymore because I'm literally hunting people. So, it's a fancy, interesting take on a, take on a story. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. So, it's up to you, though, how you, how, you, how you choose to interact with these people and what you choose to do. Um, there's no major consequences. I literally will stab everybody to death at the end of the game, to be honest with you, if I, if I need to. Um, the only one I'll keep alive is my best right there. The doll. Waifu. So, uh, she's pretty cool. Um, I don't know why she's so damn tall. But, guys, for stopping by for another episode of Blood Bloodborne. Until next time, hope you guys have fun. And until then, continue to do 